The big story on Wednesday has been the wave of risk liquidation that's knocked U.S. equity futures. We've spent a lot of time in recent weeks talking about how exhausted the U.S. equity market looks, highlighting risk for a major capitulation. Government stimulus tools and central bank monetary policy accommodation efforts are all but maxed out at this stage in the game, and the prospect of emergency low-level interest rates along with a sliding stock market is not a prospect that's going to make any investor excited. Tuesday's softer U.S. ISM manufacturing read has been a bit of a catalyst for the downturn as it has stoked global growth concerns. The Australian dollar is not immune to deterioration in risk sentiment and has sunk to its lowest level in 10 and a half years as a consequence. The yen has unsurprisingly absorbed a lot of the risk liquidation flow on its traditional correlation with risk off. As far as the euro and pound are concerned, we've seen some weakness on Wednesday, though not enough to turn heads. The pound continues to contend with the fate of Brexit, and Boris Johnson has been open about the fact that he's doing what he can to try and avoid a no-deal outcome that he does not want to see, but that he is also ready for if and in the event that things do play out this way. We continue to see this as an attempt to gain more leverage with the EU so that a deal can finally get done. Looking ahead, the market will digest U.S. ADP employment data while taking in a round of Fed speak. Gold has been in rally mode on Wednesday, which is consistent with the overall tone. That's all for now.